This review is brought to you in part by Riders Hobby Shops, where the fun begins. Stop in to one of Riders' two convenient Michigan locations, where you'll find a full range of the latest hobby products, supplies, parts, tools, and paint. This review covers the GMC Pickup with Snowplow. It's a 124 scale kit from Ravel, number 85-7222. Now this kit was released in 2012. And if uh, you know anything about the northern climates, um, these snow plows are seen everywhere nowadays. So there's one in just about every parking lot, and everybody has to use something like this. Uh, released with some nice new tooling, the uh, snow plow on the attached to the truck looks really nice. It's a skill level two, which is uh, pretty um, pretty correct, and uh, it consists of 103 pieces that are molded in white, clear and chrome plated pieces. It's got some nice looking snow tires, uh, decals and instructions. It also features separate frame pieces and some chrome plated parts uh, and stock and custom graphics. Now GM made a lot of these trucks, millions of them, uh, during the 73 to 80 um, time frame. And most of the models however were smooth sides or were uh, step sides, you see. Uh, but this is a smooth side version, so it kind of fills a void in the modeling uh, business for people who like to build the truck model. Here are the contents of the kit. Uh, the parts are pretty cleanly molded, although the detail is belongs to um, our, you know older uh, model kit, which basically originated in around 78. Uh, remember to use uh, the manufacturer safety and use guidelines when you see or hear any of the products used in the review. Now we'll be mostly using tube glue, sometimes uh, some uh, super glue type uh, CA cement, and even some clear or white glue for the window. And we'll deviate a little bit from the instructions, so just kind of bear with us. It, it makes painting and uh, detailing a little bit easier. So to start the build off, we're going to paint the body, the hood, and the bed. And uh, we're going to let those major pieces dry while we're working on the rest of the truck. Um, now starting with the cab, attach the rear bulkhead, part number two, and the front bumper extension. Then the instruction sheet calls for that as part 162, but it's actually part 161. Next, let's open up the holes for the roll bar in the body of the bed, and then we'll attach the bed sides and the tailgate. Now, I couldn't really see this before it was painted, but so that you know, there's an indentation in some of these uh, body molds that uh, will appear near the back end of the truck. Uh, you can see the line there, and you can probably feel it, uh, but I would go ahead and use some uh, thin putty to uh, fill it in and smooth it out if you want a contest model. Now we'll get at that uh, interior, and it's pretty basic. There's really only six pieces. You can do some t detailing on it, however, and the shell is made up of a uh, molded in bench seat, uh, dash steering wheel, a steering column, and a four wheel drive shifter, and a CB radio. There's really no detail on the door panels, uh, and so if you want to super detail it, uh, you'll, you'd have to do some scratch building here. I used a paint color called uh, Saddle Tan from Krylon to paint the uh, shell and the dash. And then the dash can be detailed with a little tester semi-gloss black paint marker and uh, some brown acrylic craft paint for the, uh, the insets there. Glue the CB unit to the underside of the dash there and go ahead and uh, put the dash into the notches in the interior. Um, you can add the steering column and the wheel and um, also make sure you, you don't forget to place that shifter into position on the floor. The chassis is actually pretty good looking, um, and you'll find that it's a good representation of the real thing. It's got the sway bars, axle trusses, drive shafts, and cross members you'd expect. But the um, the differential uh, are open topped. These were one one piece molds, and the leaf springs don't have really good detail. The exhaust is molded in, but other than that, if you pick out the detailing, it still looks pretty good. Assemble the uh, chassis uh, per the instructions. In step three, and by the way, um, the instructions are located at the end of the review here if you need some clarification. And once that's done, uh, I sprayed it all with a tester's flat black. After it dried, I brush painted the exhaust with some uh, burnt metalizers from testers. 
After the chassis is dry, you can go ahead and add the dual shocks. Uh, you can see them installed here and paint them any color you like. After everything was dried, I used some brown pastel powder that's been scraped off and dry brushed the chassis to give it kind of a light, rusty blush. I turned my at attention to the tires next and I sanded down the tread surface uh, to give them a little worn look and attach the wheels and the wheel backs. Now note that with the tires, there's a lip on the inside and it's off center to accommodate the difference in thickness between the wheel back and the rim. Now the chassis is pretty basic assembly, uh, but with some detail in the kit, it really looks nice and, and good, you know, once you've got it painted up and sitting on wheels. And now locate the basic uh, parts for the engine. This is a Chevy 350 small block with a three-speed manual, and it's kind of the typical Revell blob block uh, from that period. Two halves of the engine and tranny with a molded in oil pan, starter fuel pump, and oil filter. Once the block halves are set, you'll have a nice line through the oil pan that you'll need to smooth out. Uh, so go ahead and uh, scrape it off and then fill it in with putty if necessary. Now I touch the heads, the valve covers, and water pump, and then painted it all testers flat black. After that head dried, I painted the transmission tester steel and I highlighted the engine block with some semi-gloss black. After gluing the intake uh, and, the man and the valve covers in place, I attached the pulley assembly and the fan. Now the exhaust manifolds were painted uh, burnt metal, but before I attached them and painted them, I drilled a hole uh, in the middle of each manifold, and then I glued a small piece of brass rod into them, uh, which makes for a better attachment and a, and a firmer uh, you know, installation point. Now here's a look at the motor uh, upon completion, and I had actually uh, painted the intake aluminum, and the chrome was a bit too much for my taste. Once all the paint on the engine and the glue was dried, I, go, I went ahead and uh, put the uh, engine into place and glued the back end to the transfer case and dropped it onto the chassis on its mount. Make sure it's level. Now we had an old donor for this uh, kit, but the snow plow was newly tooled. Uh, just to add to this uh, GMC truck. So uh, Ravel had tooled up a new one and the real nice thing is that it, there's hardly any alterations to the truck. Uh, you basically just uh, use an attachment on the bumper. Now the plow is made up of the main plow itself, the chassis, three springs, a pump housing, bumper mounts, lights, and a lift arm. There's a chassis mount also that should have been assembled with the chassis. Attach the chassis to the main plow and then attach the springs, which were painted testers gunmetal gray, and put the pump together and attach uh, that to the bumper mount. And make sure it lines up with the lift arm and attach the right pods and paint it all flat black. The, uh, the bumper mount assembly then is, is just attached uh, without glue to the bumper. And you could, if you wanted, drill some uh, pins through there uh, holes and pins through there to keep it in place, uh, but it's meant to be, um, you know, actionable. Now it attaches to the truck, the whole plow does, with two tabs, and it slides into the slots on the truck. But just as an overall, remember, I would painted the main plow chassis uh, flat black, and then detailed the hydraulic arms with some aluminum paint. And you can see where most of the main parts are for the plow, and the lights were a little disappointing that you put in, you know, to the grill nacelles there. Uh, they, uh, once you, you put them into place, they, they kind of disappear. I tried some silver paint behind them, but the uh, glue would attack that. Uh, but there's not much detail on the lenses. So I used uh, some acrylic white paint uh, to put a wash on them. Uh, and then the tester's um, uh, signal, turn signal amber was used for the directional lights. Once dry, uh, detail the pump motor and those add the clear lenses for all the lights. This is a, a superb uh, version of a snow plow, but there's one detail that's lacking, uh, and that would be a hook that the lift chain would need to hook the, onto the plow and the chassis and lift the chain. Uh, both of them, however, you could probably um, find at craft stores and, and just scratch build. With the chassis done, the engine mounted and the plow assembly done, 
Um, the body had been painted, and now we can put it all together. Uh, the cab needs some detailing paint done, so I used a semi-gloss paint pen to line out the front and back windows uh, in the uh, you know in black, and then I used uh, some Tester's aluminum paint to pick out the uh, frame on the vent windows, and um, I used some craft paint to detail the engine bay and the batteries, and then I attached the glass front and back uh, with some white glue and um, I applied the decals to the sides of the truck. They're, they're on pretty flat surfaces so you shouldn't need any setting solution. And you've already seen uh, a picture uh, of the front end of the uh, you know truck when it's done but uh, before that we get to that point we have to finish the uh, front end. Now the grill was stripped of chrome and repainted with some L-clad uh, chrome lacquer. Uh, but before I painted it, I opened up the back of the grill with a Dremel tool. It gives a little more uh, realism. The uh, instructions have you uh, mount the spare tire in a gas can to the uh, tailgate, but that's, that's not real practical. So um, I, I would suggest you move it up forward of the roll bar or against the back wall. I attached the mirrors at this time. You have to be careful to put these on last because they're delicate and they're easy to break off. I stripped the chrome off of them, uh, which they came, uh, which came, you know, applied to it, and then uh, it also helps them um, stick. <laughs> the glue uh, sticks better. So then I painted them L-clad uh, chrome and add the radiator hose to the engine bay, and that's pretty much complete. And then the truck will receive uh, the headlights, uh, which were painted red from behind, uh, and then outlined in black. And also the roll bar gets uh, its SIBI type lights and the antenna were installed at this time as well. And uh, you see the rails along the bed there. Uh, they look, uh, that's a nice touch. Now I used the, um, the, the roll uh, bar <laughs> uh, for the gas can and I put the spare on the bed floor. Uh, so uh, attach the bed to the chassis, line them up and put them uh, together with some good glue. And I slid the completed interior into the cab which is pretty tight, so be careful. And once that's in place, you can uh, mount the whole thing onto the chassis. Here's a look at uh, the model from the underside. Uh, as I said, even though a lot of it's molded in, if you pick it out, uh, you know, with some detailing, it'll still look really nice. Well, there you have it. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, this uh, fairly simple kit looks great on the shelf, and uh, it almost looks like it's got that... Uh, demeanor of a, a snow-eaten machine and it's it's a great kit uh, uh, comparatively um, the new tooling for the snow plow is really nice and it, originally the model uh, even though it's quite older uh, still has a lot of nice looking detail and uh, warrants a little bit of scratch building for some final touches so you could use it for a lot of options uh, and the plow could be used on other models as well uh, but uh, you really need a little bit of extra work and some detailing to make this thing really stand out. But in and of itself, it's a great place to start. And if I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. Well, we hope you like this premium step-by-step -step scale model review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can do that by clicking on the icon in the lower right of any of our reviews. Or you can find us on Facebook or our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.